I hand these papers in and I'm wake, m- making my way back to class. I run into a girl that I've known since my middle school days. Um, so, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. I know her older sister. They knew my younger brother. You know, we kind of grew up in the same neighborhood somewhat. Um, but for the most part, we all knew each other. And so I'm walking back to class. I run into her. We exchange and hugs, small talk. And that small talk led to flirting. That flirting led to us agreeing to go to a known makeout spot that was on our campus. We had a few different places on campus that everybody knew. You could take a significant other. You can go and kiss, make out, and do whatever you want to do in your own privacy. And that was your thing. So we agreed, let's go to the spot. We start making our way there. Um, now, in order to get to the spot, you had to go into uh, this building called the 700 building, which was technically off limits to all kids except for a higher educational program. And then there was an adult, adult nursing program that took place downstairs. So the spot, in order to get there, you had to go through the front door of the 700 building, pass these adult classes, go upstairs, either through a flight of stairs or take the elevator. And once you get to the second floor, you had to, I mean, like, you know, on ninja toes, you had to literally tiptoe through this corridor uh, where there's classes open, in session, teachers, teacher's aides, full of students, everything. So you had to literally make your way through it in silence without getting caught because if you're not supposed to be there, they'd recognize you, they know you're not supposed to be there, you could literally get in trouble for it. So we go up into the 700 building, we get into the elevator, we go up to the second floor, we come out and we are both on the same page. We know what we have to do to get to the spot. So we're quietly walking through this hallway, we make it past, no one sees us. At the end of the hallway, there's a, a back stairs that takes you back down to the first floor at the landing of that bottom uh, step at the, the the first floor there's just a small little space before the door opens up and you're back out into you know back outside of the building but that door is locked from the outside and the only people who could basically come in are from you know it's from the exact same place that we came from which was upstairs um, so it's kind of a secluded little nook in the back of a building that is the known make house spot. So we successfully make our way to this spot uncaught. We get there, um, and we start making out we're kissing or touching. Um, at one point, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this is starting to progress. I'm thinking, you know, in my mind, yeah, we are probably going to have sex. And so I'm like, we're getting into it, we're kissing, we're touching, we're making out and pants are unbuckled. I remember my pants being kind of like halfway down, you know, to like mid thigh and her pants mid thigh. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a piece that I've, you know, I've never shared. And the reason I personally have never shared it, and it's crazy that I haven't shared it publicly. Um, but the reason I haven't shared it is, is, <laughs> because I do have a, a sense of respect for women and I do have a, I have, I have a sister, I have a mother, I have cousins who are females. Um, and never in my life would I want to do or say something that, uh, could bring embarrassment to a woman. But while we were making out and I was touching her, um, I started to put my hands between her legs and touch her there. And um, this smell just hit me. It's very bad smell coming from her. And I mean, it was to a point to where it just threw me off. I just, you know, I went from being excited, turned on and, and ready to go to, I need to get the fuck out of here, you know? And uh, I never said it to her, you know, I backed off. I started to slow down with the making out and eventually I made up this excuse about, you know, I got to get back to class. I've been gone for too long. I took papers. I did this. I got to go. She got mad. She got this attitude. You know, I made this abrupt stop. She didn't like it. And you can see it on her face. So I make a few jokes like, hey, don't trip. You know, we, we gonna get back to this. You know, let me just get back to class. Let me finish this. And we gonna, you know, now that I know what's up, we'll, we'll do it, you know. 
So she laughs, kind of, you know, like a little faint laugh. And I felt like that was enough. You know, got myself fixed up. I hit out the double doors that were, you know, the locked doors. I went out and went back to class. And that was it. I finished school. Uh, Dan, the reporter, the guy who was doing the documentary, never showed up, never returned the call. I still don't know what happens to this day with that guy. Um, but uh, I remember school being let out, and right after school was football practice within about two or three hours. So normally what we would do is a, a group of our teammates, buddies, we would leave campus, and about a block away from our school was a very famous burger spot that we'd all go to. Um, so we went there, we had food, we ate, trying to kill time before football practice started. Finished eating, made our way back to campus. We're on campus and we probably had about an hour and a half before school, before practice started. So we're sitting um, on these benches, uh, which are kind of in the, the center of the schoolyard. And we're just hanging out, waiting for, you know, waiting for the time to pass. And as we're sitting there shooting the shit, talking, you see one police officer walk by and goes into the main office building, okay? Two, another one shows up. Here comes a pair. Another pair shows up. So we started to notice this heavy presence of police officers starting to build on our campus, going into our main building. And everybody's, you know, in my school, you know, Long Beach Poly is in the center of not the best neighborhood. You know, it's the hood. Uh, so to see police on our campus was not unusual. There was always some going on, heavy gang activity in our neighborhood. There was gang activity in our school campus. So it wasn't unusual to see police. But the number of police that we were seeing, you know, really took our attention. Took our attention so much so that I remember getting up from that bench and I literally walked to one of the police officers. I said, hey, man, what's going on? You know, I was very outspoken when I was young and I didn't have a problem talking to people. Hey, what's going on? And I guess the police didn't know who exactly he was looking for at the time. He says, oh, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, I didn't finish school, so I'm back to finish school. He made some kind of, you know, weak joke attempt. And I, you know, I, all right, whatever. I shunned him off. I went back to sit down with the homies. They asked me, what do you say? I'm, nothing. I guess it's nothing. So we go back to just hanging out, waiting for practice to start. About five or 10 minutes later, um, a teammate's dad, who would always show up to every practice in every game, He's coming in the same direction from where the police were coming from onto campus and headed towards us. He gets towards us. He he takes he he says, Brian, let me talk to you real quick. And he pulls me away from everybody. And he said, hey, man, when I was walking on campus right now, I heard the police say that they were looking for a kid by the last name of Banks. Did you do something today? Did you get in trouble? I said, they ain't looking for me. I didn't do nothing. He's like, are you sure, you know, you didn't get into any trouble today to make the police want to come? I said, man, I don't, you know, I'm not involved in nothing. He said, okay, well, check with your younger brother to make sure he didn't get into any trouble because I'm I'm pretty sure they said banks. So I said, like, all right, I'll go check with my bro. My brother was in basketball practice on the other side of campus. So I head over to where he was. He's in practice. I pull him out of practice. I said, hey, come here. He's like, what's up? He says, first year in high school. I said, what'd you do today? I didn't do nothing. I said, bro, what did you do today? I swear I didn't do anything. I said, are you sure? Because supposedly police are looking for somebody last name, somebody with the last name of Banks. And he's like, I didn't do nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm straight. I said, okay, go back to practice. He goes back to practice and I head back to, I'm starting to walk back to where my guys were waiting for practice, for football practice. As I'm walking back over there, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if what the, 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 my teammates dad said was even true. Did he hear the right thing? And so I remember before I went back to my homeboys, I went to this, these steps. It was kind of like a, a two step right outside the parking lot of our school campus. And I just sat there for a bit and I'm thinking like, what the fuck is going on now? This whole time I'm thinking not once in my mind, am I thinking, there's somebody on campus accusing me of rape. Now, one time I'm not thinking the girl that I was just making out with went and called the police on me and there's an issue. Not even in my mind. I'm sitting there on these steps. I have my feet up on one step. I'm sitting up on a higher step and I have my show, my forearms on my knees and I'm just kind of sitting there at the parking lot. And maybe a few minutes later, 
from the left side of my face, corner of my eye, I see the girl who made up the accusation, her mom, her older sister, and about three or four police officers exiting the campus. And I'm saying they literally walked right by me. I don't know how they didn't see me. I was sitting right there on the steps. The steps are at the door. They exited and made a left towards the police cars. When I saw that, my whole like heart just dropped. I'm like, oh shit. Now the reason I said all oh, shit was not because I'm thinking this girl is accusing me of sexual assault. I'm saying, oh shit, because this girl is, her mom is a known gang member, been in and out of prison, drugs, very aggressive, and she is very much in the likeness. School bully, kicked out of class a lot, you know, shit starter, fighting girls. She was a very rough, you know, you know on the rough edge. So I'm thinking, fuck, she probably did something, got in trouble. They saw me moving around with her today on campus and they probably want to talk to me about it. And I'm like, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm not going to deal with it. So I remember when they left the parking lot and they turned left to the police cars, I stood up and I went to the right of the parking lot. And as soon as I got out of view of them bending around the parking lot, I just went into a full sprint out of the parking lot through the baseball field of our, our team's baseball field. I ran across the field, went out the, the back gate, and I went to my homeboy's house who lived two blocks away from the high school campus. His spot was another area that a bunch of students, a bunch of football players would go to waiting for practice. He had like Nintendo 64 and PlayStation, and so they, we'd go play games and everything and wait for practice. That's the nearest phone I knew I could get to. I'm like trying to call mom. So I'm running to the phone. I'm out through the, through the parking lot, through the school, two blocks down. I bust into his door. I'm sweating frantically. And everybody's like, yo, what the fuck? What's, what's going on? What's going on? It's like eight, nine guys in there playing games. And I said, damn, I think the police are looking for me. And everybody start busting out laughing. You know, it was <laughs> they're like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, no, I swear to God, I think the police are looking for me. They're like, for what? I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't have a clue. I was like, let me use your phone. I hop on the phone, call my mom. She's in school. I, she was a teacher. She's still a teacher. Call my mom. I said, mom, I think the police looking for me. She says, for what? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But I, someone told me the police are looking for me. And there's police on campus. And she's like, well, what did you do today? I said, I didn't do nothing. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I didn't do anything that would make the police want to come talk to me. You know, I didn't tell my mom I made out with a girl on campus. And so she goes, well, if you didn't do anything, then don't worry about it. And I was like, I don't know. Something just don't feel right. And she said, okay, well, then come home. So I said, all right, I'm going to come home. I skipped practice. I left my book bag in my homeboy's house. And I jetted to the nearest bus that I can catch, uh, the uh, public transit. And I took the bus home. And probably took me about an hour to get home. I get home. My mom's at the house at that time. She had got off work and made it home. And so she asked me again, what happened? What's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I just, someone told me the police were looking for me. And, you know, obviously I don't, I didn't do anything. So I don't know what's going on. She said, well, it, you probably overreacting and overthinking the situation. Don't worry about it. And so I let it go. I said, okay, cool. I went back into my room. I took a shower. I was hot and it was summertime. After I got out the shower, I um, jumped in bed. I was tired. I went and took a nap and I laid down, fell asleep. I was awakened uh, out of my sleep by this pressure pushing down into the middle of my back, sinking me into the bed. I'm laying on my stomach and uh, I can feel this just pushing me down, pushing me down, pushing me down. So naturally I wake up and I jolt. Then I'm like, what? And I hear like, don't move, stay still, stay right there. Don't move, don't move. Put your hands behind your back. And I'm like, what? Put your hands behind your back. I'm putting my hands behind my back. And um, man, they handcuffed me and uh, they yanked me up off the bed. And when I get yanked off the bed, that's when I'm finally seeing what's going on in my room. There's like three, four police officers in the room. They got the guns out. They're not pointing at me, but they like got them down. I guess I'm a big kid. I was uh, 16. I was 6'1", 6'2", about 225, you know, and I guess they, they felt they needed to treat me as a, an adult. I don't know. So guns are out. 
I'm handcuffed. They're barking orders at me, telling me to find clothes to wear, asking me where the clothes that I wore to school today. I'm showing them where the clothes were. I'm picking out something to wear and I'm getting, they're dressing me up with the handcuffs on, throwing a sweater over my head. And they are forcing me out of my bedroom, down the stairs and out of the house into a police car. And I remember as I'm leaving my room, my mom's room was just a J, like just down the hallway upstairs from mine. You come out of my door, her door is facing my door, bathroom, closet, her door. And uh, to this day, man, I, I, I've i never seen something that really affected me more than that. Than this was my mom uh, dropping to the ground on both of her knees and, and screaming at the top of her lungs, just in, in pain, just saying no and why. And, you know, please don't take my baby and what's going on. And you can't do this. I mean, she's screaming and crying and I'm being pushed and led out of the house and I'm they throw me into the back of this police car and I'm a big kid. The police cars are, you know, super small, super tight. And they throw me in with the cuffs behind behind my back. And um <laughs> on a small note, it's it's uh I remember these two kids were playing out in the front yard a few houses away. And once they slammed the door and walked away, these two kids were looking to see what was going on and then they probably like eight, nine year olds. They walk up to the police car and they kind of look, put their hands on the glass and they look through and here I am handcuffed and sweating. And uh, I don't know why I remember that so much. It just felt like I was like I was a fish in a fishbowl. And all of a sudden I, I was no longer a part of the real world that, and I, you know, I had these kids like staring me down. Anyways, the police eventually get into the car, two guys, one driver, one passenger, and they begin driving off. Now, mind you, I I hadn't been told what was going on yet. I didn't know what was going on yet. And it wasn't until we started driving off, we probably got to the freeway heading heading back to uh, Long Beach um, that I finally speak. I'm like, hey, yo, what's, you know, what's going on? Can y'all at least tell me what's going on? The passenger, the cop, kind of looks back halfway and he's like, yeah, man, you've been accused of rape. Said you raped some girl on your campus. And I, I hadn't had nothing else to say from there. I, it, it, just hearing that, uh, uh, it just, uh, I mean, what do you say? You know, obviously, I, I didn't do it, but to just be in handcuffs, uh, to be taken the way that I was taken.